So in our previous example, we talked about the two film theory, and we only used one film. That seems strange, right? Yeah, but you can use the two film theory if you have one film, two films, three films, four films, and so on. You don't need to necessarily have exactly two films. And the reason why we only had one film in the previous example was that we have water evaporating. The concentration of water in water is constant, right? Okay, if you have more than one film, what we often want to have is an overall mass transfer coefficient, just as in the same way as we have an overall heat transfer coefficient when we talk about heat transfer. So how did we deal with overall heat transfer coefficient? Well, you might remember this, or otherwise we repeat this very quickly. Uh, if you have a wall and you have heat being transported from one side to the other, you have a heat transfer coefficient on one side, heat conductivity, and then a heat transfer coefficient on the other side. And if you assume steady state, you can say that, okay, the same heat is being transported through all these layers. And if we have a nice situation where the area stays the same, we can say that, okay, for heat transfer, we have Q equals H times A times the temperature difference. For heat conductivity, we instead have the conductivity divided by the thickness times the area and the temperature difference. And we can define an overall heat transfer coefficient as Q equals K times the area times the temperature difference. And we can move around things and, and derive this equation here, that 1 divided by the overall heat transfer coefficient equals 1 divided by the first heat transfer coefficient plus the thickness divided by the conductivity. And if you have several different materials, you can take the sum of them all, uh, sum of the thickness divided by the respective conductivity, and then at last 1 divided with the other heat transfer coefficient. So what about overall mass transfer coefficients? Well, you can have a situation, for example, where you have gas on this side, and then you have some kind of porous material, and then you have liquid on the other side. And we can do the same thing. So we have uh, some kind of uh, diffusivity in all three mediums. So one medium here, and then some strange thing here with a porous thing, or and then something on the other side. So we can use mass transfer coefficients here, we can use diffusivities in here, and then mass transfer coefficient again. So to the surface, we have a mass transfer coefficient uh, times the area times the difference in concentration in the bulk, so far away and very close to the surface, exactly at the surface. And then through the material, we have a diffusivity and the diffusivity divided by the thickness times uh, the concentration difference between this side and that side, and then times the area. That also has to be the molar transport. And on the other side, the molar transport has to be the mass transfer coefficient on that side uh, times the area times the concentration difference from here to out in the bulk. And just as we can do with heat transfer, we can define our overall mass transfer coefficient using an equation that looks like this. Na equals large K times the area times the concentration from in one medium in the bulk to the other medium in the bulk. And you might see that Na, if we have steady state, then Na has to be the same. And if you have the same area all over, you can rearrange this and you see that you get the same kind of equation as you did for overall heat transfer coefficients.